One day the boys I grew up with said, why didn't you get that camera and uh, take some pictures? You never get that camera out. So I got and doubled up to the house, got the camera, went down to the bottom of the street where I live, saw this derelict building which the boys always vandalized. And I said, jump up there, and they were individually in between the, the structures, and I did the picture. But then uh, several months later, there was a gang war, and some people came from Islington to sort these boys out that I grew up with. Because, you know, England in the 50s was very tribal. Seems to have gone back to that lately. And um, a policeman came. It was a Sunday night. I wasn't there. I was with my young uh, fiancé. And um, tried to stop. And, and the other guy, one of the other guys, knifed him in the back and killed him. And he went to the gallows for doing that. So um, my career got started on a, you know, a serious note of violence. Let me ask you about one uh, particular shot because it's, uh, and I can keep seeing it in, in my eye line, it's right over your shoulder of the, of the shell-shocked Marine, um, which tells us all about war with not an awful lot of the horror of war there because it's all in those eyes. It's not a great story, really. I, I, I've been sleeping in another uh, bombed out house. I took a kind of a night away from this particular uh, company, a Delta company. I was on, on this ancient war with, where the fighting was at, at its most fierce. And uh, I came back early in the morning to join them to resume the day's fighting. And I saw this man sitting, and there was a sergeant there. And I said to the sergeant, what's going on here? And the sergeant said, oh, him, forget him. You know, he had total disrespect. You know, anyone who quits in, in US Marines is, is not particularly <laughs> well liked. And, uh, so I dropped on my knees and I did five shots of this man, just not using an automatic camera, just winding my film over. And I have a job when I look at that, that strip of film, there's not one of those images that's different from the other. He never blinked an eyelid. He was staring a thousand yards beyond me. And I left him and to go into another yard and a mortar dropped in the yard, smashed the sergeant. But for some miraculous reason, totally avoided hitting this sitting Marine, who was a sitting duck. When those pictures eventually came back with me, and, and I processed the film, and I printed all the pictures, I don't think for a second they changed anything about the world we live in. Ah, well, I, I read that, and I, I mean, with the greatest respect, can I disagree a bit? Because certainly public opinion changed, did it not? And it was some of your visual images that had that effect, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, but I could cancel out what we're talking about here by purely, I have the evidence. There was a very famous picture of the chief of police in Saigon shooting the man in the head. That was done in 1968. The war didn't end until 1975. So several years went by before the war finally came to a halt. And in the end, the war didn't come to a halt by choice of the Americans. The North Vietnamese overwhelmed the, 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 you know, and in the end became the glorious victors, and they smashed through those presidential gates with their tank. And, um, you know, they, they won, I think, in a justifiable way. I mean, they sacrificed a million men to win that war. I mean, you couldn't sacrifice a million men if you were an American president. The public wouldn't have stood for it. Nevertheless, they lost 58,000 killed in that war, the Americans. And in, and in the end, you know, the American public couldn't stomach, stomach any more of it, really. Another thing that has changed, but not for the better, is, is the freedom, it seems, you and others had to roam, yeah. to form relationships, to get under the skin, in particular, of the military operation. Yeah. They learned the lessons of that, didn't they? And in particular, I, I imagine, in the next big American conflict, there were plenty in between, but one thinks of the, the first Gulf War in yeah. the 90s. Then you got to be embedded, you were yeah. controlled, you yeah. weren't able to go where they didn't want you to go. And they wouldn't allow you to photograph wounded soldiers. I mean, I've got pictures of dead American soldiers, pictures of American soldiers. You know, I have a picture of a soldier that he and I were, it was at dusk on this ancient wall in Hue, and suddenly between us, a Chinese hand grenade. And we both looked at it, and I threw myself into a depression in the ground, and it exploded. And I thought I had my leg blown off. I was hit by a million bits of stone. Luckily, not the shrapnel. But this thing killed the man with me. As he was a bit goofy and a bit slow off the mark. Um, and he, as he turned around, he took the whole lot in the back of his neck. And that, so he was bleeding from his nose and mouth and ears. And, you know, he was a goner. And um, 
they, they waited until it was dark and then the Marines went and got his body. They, they always boasted that they would never leave their dead on the battlefield at night. So it was a, an extraordinary experience. Um, and, you know, at the end of the day, I think the, um, America blamed the press for losing them that war, but they couldn't endlessly keep pouring, you know, uh, lives into that war to prove a point. And basically, we were really still talking about the Cold War, really. But may I say, you know, the, the, the one thing that you do very differently from the, the, the digital filmers and photographers of today, I mean, we all see it now, don't we? That any event you go to, football match, concert, whatever, children's party, a large majority of the people there <coughs> are filming the event because you're not there, apparently, unless you've recorded it digitally. In all your photographs, there's engagement, is what I get. Is yes, you're looking through the lens for the time being, but it, be it you know, the shell shot soldier, but even a woman at a meat counter in Harrods, yeah. one of them is just looking at the camera. Well, I, I try to be invisible, which is totally impossible, of course. And many people ask me, the old chestnut, do you ever hide behind the camera? You can't, it's only that big. What you hide behind sometimes is the embarrassment and, and the awfulness you sometimes see what's taking place in front of you, like men being massacred in Beirut, executions and starving children, you know. That's when you wish you could hide behind the camera. That's when you wish you were almost not there, really. But they do produce these terribly haunting, powerful pictures. So there is a guilt dilemma which I'm riddled with. You know, I've made a name out of photography, but a lot of it is at other people's expense.